Granted a mere 15 minutes break, I make my way to the Academy Library. It is a place I've visited many times through this senscape filled with yet to be digitalized books. The library contains knowledge found nowhere else in the world. Ancient tombs, stones, tablets dating back thousands of years from spell books from a time with witches reign supreme, even the occasionally cursed enchanted book. Visiting such a place for real, for the first time, I feel a shiver run down my spine. The legendary Adramatic Glass Academy Library, at long last, I'm able to come here in person. Although the sunscapes are desirable when wishing to experience certain things or to view particular places, sunscapes of a library are simply aggravating. Physical books yet to be digitalized are all around you, and yet you cannot reach out to grab them, nor can you view the contents of their non-existent digital equivalents. It's like staring at a picture of food when you're starving. It will do you no good, and the act amounts to nothing more than self-torture. There are many books in here I've been wanting to read. Now that I have access to this library, my studies are going to be it's going to accelerate like crazy. I may not have the right time now, but after classes are over for the day, I'm definitely coming back here. Resisting the urge to open my terminal and read through the long list of books I've been wanting to check out, instead I walk over to the counter. On the wall are the rules of the library, as well as the conditions which must be met in order to borrow a book. It appears that students are expected to register for a library card and use that to identify themselves. Once they you are able to use a terminal, their terminal ID can be used instead. Uh, I'm so glad that I have invested my term to learning such a useful spell. Who needs physical identification when you have a terminal? Briefing patting of myself on the bat. I soon noticed something odd on the other side of the counter. I could hear pages being torn and the sound of something being devoured. What the heck? Did a magical beast get into the library? Magic beasts, ordinary animals, warped by prolonged exposure, the high density either rarely seek out locations such as this. Most magic beasts don't possess the intelligence to read or understand human language, so libraries offer them nothing of substance. Only a highly intellect and simply dangerous beasts would bother to come here. What should I do? I can allow the books in here to be devoured. I don't have the strength to fight a high level beast either. Is there anything I can do? Alright, so I guess our first um thingy majiggy. Alright, so grab the beast, act as bait, and inspect the beast. You know what? Ball it. I exhale deeply and try to muster my courage. It's okay. I'll be okay. Nobody's fighting anybody. I just need to drag attention away from these precious books and have it chase me. Then while it's chasing me after I run through the building and try to locate some powerful senior students who can take it down, armed with a half-baked plan, I creep closer to the counter. I begin to gather right there in my right palm, then curl a hand into my finger gun. I squeeze my pinky and made fingers to the palm, and a glyph appears in front of my index finger. A small quantity of water shoots out the glyph, as though my hand were a water gun. Not a large amount of water, and not at high speed, just enough to grab the beast's attention. Hey, yeah, got it. Now I need to run away while it's... Wait a minute, Kaya. As I turn around to flee, the beast enters my sight. Oh, jeez, what are you doing? My mask is gonna rust. Dumbfounded, I remain motionless. I simply stare at the person in front of me, unable to speak. I guess, uh, 
Some people are just a beast when it comes to reading. <laughs> they aren't a beast at all. I was completely mistaken from the very beginning. A student, a female student who is a year or two older than I am. Not a threat, just another peculiar encounter. Uh, sorry about that. Our page being torn by only caught this, so I thought a magic beast has gotten into the library. Magic beast, you say? Oh dear, I suddenly heard not. Last time a magic beast found its way in here, we lost a significant portion of the true crime section. This academy's library has a true crime section. Smiling wryly, I bowed my head. At any rate, I'm sorry for startling you. Oh no, not at all. If anything, I'm thankful for your attentiveness. If you do see a magical beast, please do not hesitate to take action. Oh sure. I scratch my head as I make sense of the young woman standing in front of me. Leaving aside her personality for the moment, there is still one question you must ask before anything else. So if there's no magical beast, then the one tearing up the books was you. Uh, the girl opens her eyes. Why does she only realize that she's been caught in the act? I don't know no, that is. I mean, I was tearing pages out of a book, but it's not what you think. I raised an eyebrow at the girl's failed explanation. So you were destroying library books? Yes, I mean, no, I mean, I was, but there's a good reason for this, really. What kind of reason can you have for destroying library books? Beginning to panic, the girl raises her voice. I was tearing pages out of the book only because I was asked to. <laughs> That's a wonderful reason. Somebody asks you to tear some books out, you know what? So why not? This person asked me to, so I'm just gonna rip off some books. You were asked to destroy academy property by who? By my boss, the academy's principal. My gaze grows dull and I slack in my draw, staring at the girl in front of me in utter disbelief. Don't look at me like that, it's true. My job is to digitalize the books in this library and destroy the books themselves after I'm done. Finally, something that she says that makes sense. You're in charge of digitalizing the books here, but aren't you a student? In response to my question, the girl stares at me quizzically. After a few moments, her eyes widen as she just realized something. Uh, I see, you must have just enrolled here, correct? Yes, today is my first day at the academy. Oh, of course. It's that time of the year already, isn't it? I suppose that would make me a third year student now. Suddenly talking in a much brighter tone, the girl happily continues to speak. Your teachers will be telling you about this in your second year at the academy, but there are actually many jobs that you can apply for while studying here. Students work odd jobs around the academy in order to make a bit of extra money. It's mostly seen as a way for low-ranking students to raise their loans. Ah, uh, but don't get the wrong idea. I am most certainly not a low-ranking student. I have my own reasons for doing this, I assure you. I ignore the girl's final statement. I open my terminal and begin research for job listings inside of the academy. After performing a few searches, however, I'm still yet to find anything of the sort. It seems that either first-year students are blocked from accessing this information, or that information cannot be found using a terminal. Search all you want, but you won't find anything. You need to receive permission from your grades advisor before you can access any information about the jobs that are available. Ah, uh, that would explain it. That is unfortunate. I'm curious, but not curious enough to approach her. Huh? My grades advisor, Iris Monty. Yeah. The girl's face warps in disgust as she hears Iris's name. I guess she uh, she's not real well liked. <laughs> the first year students are struck with heroes, huh? You poor things. Heroes? Oh, my apologies. I should not speak that way about a teacher. Don't worry about it. It's not like I'm going to tell you what you said. 
that it's clear how she got that nickname. You don't have to know the half of it. A look of concern appears on the girl's face as she begins to think about Iris. As a boy, you need to be especially careful around that woman. Rumor has it she's been caught sending high, lately inappropriate messages to students late at night. If she's still working here, then that I can only imagine that she has at least been barred from teaching and corresponding with students who have completed their first year here. The reason why she would be allowed to teach first year students? There is, but wait a second. You were used in the terminal a moment ago, weren't you? Importantly, I would congratulate you for accomplishing such a feat. In this case, you have been bitten off more than you could chew. What do you mean by that? Is there something to do with... Oh. At that moment, everything falls into place. You figured it out, haven't you? Heroes have most likely been forbidden to, from interacting with those of us who aren't first-year students. Since first... Since most of us had a new terminal. Oh, that makes sense. That's why she can only teach first years. Because most of them can't use terminals. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. All right. That being said, if there's only a single... If there was only a single first year, particularly a male student capable of using a terminal, then all of her inappropriate communications will be concentrated on onto that one student. Exactly. I shudder at the thought of being targeted by Iris. While attractive, her attitude and apparent promisingly leave a lot to be desired. Were I to become the sole target of a succubus, I might never sleep through the night again. That's good to know. But wait a second, I already t tried contact this Iris and she blocked my terminal ID the second I asked for assistance. Does that mean I'm in the clear? The girl shakes her head. She will move the block the moment she becomes to become un um, aroused. I I see. If that happens, can't I just block her terminal ID? You're underestimating the staff at this academy. Arrows may be a hopeless pervert, but she's still a top class mage. If you really want to ward her off, the best thing you can do is respond to her in a troublesome manner. A troublesome manner. Ask her questions about the current the curriculum at this academy, or about finding work. Respond to her depravity with questions about your studies. She'll soon lo lose interest. Serious? The girl shrugs. It worked for the boys in my grade. Then again, she had many more targets at the time, so she could have so she could afford to give up more easily. I sudden find myself very concerned about the nights where I will be spending at this academy. Succubi are capable of acting human during the day, but come night time, their true selves emerge. Under the light of a full moon, in particular, their lust skyrockets, and they become the sex-crazed beasts often portrayed in literature. Thank you for the woman, for the warning, and I'll make sure to take your advice seriously. Uh, don't mention it. I'm glad to be of assistance. So, um, if you could keep quiet about me eating books. Eating books? Uh, no, I didn't say that. Terran books. I said Terran books. <laughs> Would you accidentally confess your real blind? I stare at the girl in amazement as she hurriedly corrects herself. Whatever she's been doing in this library, I'm sure I don't want to know about it. That <laughs> makes you both. Okay, then. Whatever you're doing in here, I think it's about time I returned to class. I'll see you later. Oh, just one more thing before you leave. The girl brings up the tournament and shows it to me. This may sound presumptuous of me, but would you care to save my contact details? I mean, you could use a terminal after all. And I'm sure you're bound to have more questions about your classmates that cannot answer. Though some people as teachers and scholars make their terminal ID and personal information freely available, the same cannot be said about students. For us, the most common way of finding out somebody's ID is by asking for them in person and saving their details on your own terminal. It's inconvenient, 
but for the sake of preserving one's privacy, it's a small price to pay. Absolutely, that would be a great help. Let me just open my terminal as well, and then the display around, just as the girl in front of me has. Fable Liar. Quite an unusual name. It is only at that moment that I realized neither one of us has asked for the other one for their name. Geez, I really need to work on my social skills. Oh, I guess I'll find out this girl's name in a second. Anyway, I check the girl's thermal stones and see, search for her name and idea. Jurugaku? That's my name. Who replies happily, no doubt. Smiling from ear to ear behind the mask of hers. Alright, Jaru. That makes you the first entry in my contacts list. Or rather, the first terminal ID. Although I have other contacts saved in my terminal, there are mostly the address and phone numbers of people incapable of using magic. Seeing as there are no phones in the academy. However, and mobile phones are strictly forbidden. It's unlikely that I'll ever have a use for them. Yeah, I'm honored. I just added you to Sable, making you number three on my list. That's good to know. I won't be able to respond in the middle of class, but if it's any other time, feel free to... Wait, did you just say you have two other contacts? Yes, I'm afraid so. Teachers and administrators can be filed through a quick search, so it's common if your students do not bother to add them to the contacts. Same cannot be said about the contact details of students, however. So it's important to keep a record of those who you might wish to contact. But third year students to have two contacts is not a good sign. Well, I won't pry. And it looks like I'm in a position to criticize anyway. Contact me whenever you're free, Jairu. Can't promise that I'll respond immediately, but I'll do my best to be prompt. Uh, yes, me too. If you have any questions or problems, don't hesitate to rely on me. Waving goodbye to one another, I part from Jairu as I leave the library with more questions than I had than I had when I entered. Between her mask, the matter of her possibility eating books, and severely limited number of contacts, I leave with a sense that Jairu might be more dangerous than she let on. 